New week, new study, new controversy, nutrition's never boring. A very large randomized trial was just published looking at the Mediterranean diet. They recruited about a thousand volunteers and followed them for seven years. So that's unusual. Large scale, very long follow-up. I think this trial is going to be talked about for years to come, just like the Lyon and Predimed trials became household names. Well, for nutrition nerds anyway. So the trial is called Cordioprev, which is short for coronary diet intervention with olive oil and cardiovascular prevention. Kind of a mouthful. The volunteers had a history of heart disease. So this is what's called a secondary prevention trial. They already have the disease. We're trying to prevent more events down the line, like heart attacks and strokes. So the participants were randomly split into two groups. One was assigned a Mediterranean diet and the other a diet lower in fat, which they call low fat outright. Now, anytime a study calls something low fat or low carb, there's going to be complaints. There's always somebody who thinks it wasn't low enough. And this was no exception. So let's take a look at what the diets actually looked like. So the goals, what the investigators were shooting for, was 35% or more of calories from fat on the Mediterranean diet, with the main source being olive oil, and less than 30% on low fat, or lower fat. We'll come back to this issue of the names in a second and they wanted to keep protein approximately constant. Now, since one diet is gonna have less fat than the other, that fat needs to be replaced with something. And since the protein is constant, that something needs to be carbohydrate. So the goal for carbs was under 50% of calories on Mediterranean and over 55 on low fat. Now, these numbers mean nothing to most people. You need to tell them what foods to actually eat. So what they recommended was more olive oil, nuts and fatty fish on Mediterranean to increase that fat intake, while on low fat those foods were to be reduced and instead people were encouraged to eat more legumes and whole grains and to favor low fat dairy. Other than that, the recommendations were pretty similar. Substantial fruits and vegetables on both, white meat with no skin or visible fat, pretty low in eggs for both diets, low in red or processed meats, and low in refined carbohydrates. So the whole idea of the trial is to compare two generally health-promoting diets that kind of check all the boxes. One a little higher in carbs, one a little higher in fat, and see if that makes a difference for cardiovascular disease, while trying to stick to high-quality fats and high-quality carbs. So mostly unsaturated fats, predominantly from olive oil, and mostly complex, unrefined carbs. So those were the recommendations, what they asked the participants to eat. Now, as you might imagine, you ask a thousand people to change their diet for seven years, that's a lot of moving pieces. So they kept in touch with all of those people every couple months over the phone, and they met them face to face a few times a year, both in groups and individually. So they continuously touched base on whether the participants found it easy or hard to stick to their assigned diet. And at certain intervals, they went over what they were actually eating. People on Mediterranean reported going over the goal of 35% of calories from fat. They actually got 40% but the low-fat group didn't quite reach the goal of 30 or less. They only reduced to 32. Close, but not quite. Same for carbs. People on Mediterranean hit the goal and went beyond. The goal was under 50, and they got less than 40, so that's good. But on low-fat, they fell short. The goal was over 55, and they only hit 45. And protein was a bit lower on Mediterranean, about 2% lower. So this is pretty typical of these trials. People make changes in the direction of the recommendations, but they don't necessarily hit the goals and maintain them throughout the duration of the follow-up. This was actually pretty good, especially considering how long the study was. In terms of specific foods, they changed a bit up and down over the course of the seven years, as you would expect. But basically, by the end, the main differences were people on Mediterranean reported eating more olive oil, as requested, more than twice as much, and more nuts and oily fish. And both groups cut back on red meat and refined carbs as recommended. On the other hand, there was little difference in legumes, grains, and potatoes between the two diets by the seven year mark. So that doesn't reflect the recommendations. And the Mediterranean group ended up eating a bit more fruits and vegetables, about 10% more. So some of the specific goals were met, others were not. But overall, they did succeed in creating a significant difference in fat and carbohydrate as intended. 
The low-fat group stayed a bit short of the goals, but the Mediterranean group went a bit beyond. So they got that minimum separation. Now, before we look at the results on cardiovascular disease rates, which honestly shocked me a bit, let's touch quickly on some of the common questions that came up. Lots of people asked about the names of the diets. Is it accurate to call it a Mediterranean diet and a low-fat diet? Totally valid questions. So Mediterranean diet is a fluid concept. We know it varies from country to country in the Mediterranean region. And we also know that nowadays people tend to eat junkier foods than they did traditionally. When scientists talk about the Mediterranean diet, what they mean is this pattern. Rich in vegetables, some whole grains with olive oil and fish, and lower in red meat and low in ultra-processed foods. Within those parameters, there's plenty of wiggle room, but this is generally what people have in mind. And low fat, for some people, getting 30% of your calories from fat is super high. For others, it's low. Some people get 70% of their calories from fat. So it's a little subjective, as long as we know what we're talking about. The point is, it's lower than the comparison diet. That's the bottom line. And why low fat as a comparison? Well, because it used to be the recommendation for cardiovascular disease, to avoid too much dietary fat. The scientific understanding has evolved, and for decades now we've known that it's more about fat quality. So major scientific organizations nowadays reflect that in their messaging. Okay, so what effect did these diets have on cardiovascular disease? That's the bottom line. The overall rate of cardiovascular disease and mortality in the study was pretty low, supporting the idea that both diets are health-promoting in general. When comparing between the two diet groups, they found 28% less cardiovascular events, things like heart attacks, strokes, etc., on the Mediterranean diet than on the lower-fat diet. The effect was specific to men. Over 80% of the volunteers were men. In women, there was no significant difference across the two diets, possibly because their number was so low, but we don't know for sure. On the plus side, when they looked specifically at the participants that stuck the closest to the recommendations, what they call the high adherence participants, the effect was stronger. 40% less cardiovascular events on the Mediterranean diet. So that adds a little bit of confidence to the results. So that's the gist of the findings of this recent study. Now, what often happens with these very long trials is they publish some of their findings along the way before that last big report comes out. So I went back a few years and dug for more information on this. For example, in this report published last year, they did some imaging of the carotids, the neck arteries of the participants, and the results indicated a reduction in plaque size seen only on the Mediterranean diet. So that would seem to align with the outcome data, with the events, the cardiovascular events, also being lower on Mediterranean. Another thing that jumped out was that after the seven years of follow-up, there was no significant difference between the two groups in body weight, cholesterol levels, ApoB, fasting glucose, or triglycerides. So where are the benefits coming from? I found another prior report from two years ago looking at several serum markers, and the most striking difference between the two diets was C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. It was reduced on Mediterranean diet, and it seems to actually have gone up a bit on low fat. And we know from large randomized trials that inflammation is one of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So that's one possibility, that there's a decrease in inflammation in the Mediterranean group that lowers their cardiovascular disease risk. Now, the main controversy I saw on social media was regarding which specific food delivered the benefits. Some people concluded it was the olive oil, and we should all be eating more of it. And others said, no, actually the participants on the Mediterranean diet did better in spite of eating more olive oil. Oil is harmful, and it's because they're eating more fruits and vegetables, it offsets the harm of the oil. Both of those views are a bit of a stretch, because as we saw, there were differences in multiple foods across the two diets. So we can't tell which one delivered the benefit. And that's totally fine. It doesn't make the study low quality, the very experimental design was to change the intake of several different foods. That's what they asked the participants to do, because it was a trial aimed at comparing entire dietary patterns, not one food in isolation. What we can say with objectivity, and this is my first takeaway from all of this, is that this is yet another large data set showing good outcomes of a Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean-ish, right, whatever that means, with some olive oil, it doesn't mean that the same diet without the olive oil couldn't have the same benefits. This trial can't tell us that. But we do have some prior evidence on that question. For example, the PREDIMED trial had three diet groups, not two. Low-fat diet and two Mediterranean groups, one with extra olive oil and one with extra nuts. And both of the Mediterranean arms showed similar benefit. 
So it suggests both sources of unsaturated fat are roughly equivalent. It would be awesome if this new trial had also included a third group with more nuts and less olive oil, but they didn't. Quick word on funding, because this always comes up. This study was sponsored by a foundation involved in olive oil production, among other funding sources. So a lot of people asked, does that invalidate the study? It does not. We're actually working on an entire video on funding issues in nutrition research, but long story short, it's okay to note funding source, but we value scientific studies based on methodological rigor. Some great studies are industry funded and some really bad ones are not. So noting the source of funding never replaces scientific appraisal, okay? We're gonna revisit this issue in future videos for sure, because this comes up all the time and it makes total sense to ask. So we've talked before about the popularity of the Mediterranean diet with nutrition professionals. And this is part of the reason is that we have these large randomized trials, Lyon, Predimed, and now Cordioprev. None of those trials are perfect. And this doesn't mean that we know the Mediterranean diet is the best diet out there. It just means there's a lot of high level evidence behind it. It consistently looks pretty good for outcomes. So professionals are more confident. It'd be great if we had these large trials for every diet out there, and maybe in the future we will. Seeing one of these large trials come out in real time also drives home the point that this vague idea online that nutrition is all epidemiology is a huge misunderstanding. In addition to these unusually large trials that come out once in a blue moon, we have hundreds, if not thousands of other smaller trials on all aspects of nutrition. The realization is that randomized controlled trials aren't perfect. They involve significant uncertainty. You follow a thousand people for seven years, there's gonna be some unknowns. You gotta rely on what they tell us they eat. Maybe other changes happened in their lives that affected the results. Cordioprev actually approaches the limits of what's possible to do in nutrition, changing the entire diet of a population and following them for years. This is the gold standard. It was well designed, well carried out, and it's a massive undertaking. So my second major takeaway from all of this is this trade-off between control and relevance that is inherent to all scientific experiments. You can look at mice in cages. You have maximum control and minimum relevance because you don't know what happens in humans. Or you can look at humans in cages, what's called a metabolic ward. The participants live in the research facility and every bite of food is counted. You have good control, but medium relevance because you're limited in time. You can't trap people in your research facility for years. So you end up looking at serum markers, surrogates of disease. And it also doesn't tell you how people behave in normal conditions in their normal life. And finally, you can look at humans in their natural environment, what's called a free living population. This allows you to follow them for years and look at actual heart outcomes like heart attacks, strokes, etc. And it reflects normal behavior in the real world. So the relevance is maximum, but you pay for that by having less control. So this is why we do all of these different experiments. Each study by itself is like a pixel and putting all the information together gives us the big picture. Third major takeaway, fat isn't bad. We can't say it was the extra fat in the Mediterranean diet that delivered the benefits, because as we saw, there were other differences, but this trial and many other results are completely inconsistent with the idea that eating more fat is bad for the heart. The group eating the most fat had the best cardiovascular outcomes. It's about fat quality. Unsaturated fats like olive oil consistently show good results. We actually covered all the data on olive oil in a previous video, and I'll link that at the end. If you don't like olive oil, totally fine. There's other oils, there's nuts and seeds, there's fatty fish, personal choice. But there's no reason to be afraid of fat as a whole for health reasons. Interestingly, two things that people are concerned about regarding olive oil are one, that it harms endothelial health, and two, that maybe it's okay for healthy people, but if you're sick with cardiovascular disease, you should avoid it. This trial contradicts both of those ideas. The participants were sick people with cardiovascular disease to begin with, and yet they did best on the diet with the most olive oil. Incredibly difficult to reconcile this with the idea that olive oil raises risk. What about endothelial function? In some experiments, there's a reduction in the mobility of the artery walls right after eating olive oil. This is an assay called flow-mediated dilation. But lots of things can cause FMD, flow-mediated dilation, to drop acutely in the short term. Some types of exercise cause it. Sleep can cause it. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the overall health value long term. 
In fact, remember the report I showed you with the inflammation markers, C-reactive protein? It also looked at endothelial function, and it found that the Mediterranean diet was better for endothelial function. And they looked precisely at FMD, flow-mediated dilation, and it went up. It improved on the Mediterranean group. So we have to be very careful about extrapolating these short-term oscillations in a parameter. Bottom line, if you like some olive oil in your diet, be mindful of overall calories. Otherwise, I don't see a problem. If you don't like olive oil, also not a problem. Plenty of other sources of quality fat that we talked about. And if you hate the Mediterranean diet, don't eat it. It's better to eat something that you can actually sustain long-term. Try to take the core ideas of the Mediterranean diet and apply them to a pattern that works for you if you can. Unprocessed fruits and vegetables, high quality fat, mostly unsaturated, high quality carbs, mostly unrefined, and easy on the ultra processed stuff. That's it right there. Let me know your thoughts on all of that. I know it was a lot. Take care. See you next time.